Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. I'm, of course, Nick McDaniel, and as always, I'm joined by my man, Myron. Great to see you, folks. Glad to be back on this wonderful podcasting day. Got a special mailbag episode. The last episode we did, once again, so well received, we're going to do another one. Uh, Nick only got me these questions earlier today because I have been busy working with contractors on my house, so I am just now seeing these. I'm going to read them. He compiled them out of our mailbag. I'm going to read them, and we're going to get an answer to these questions. We're going so, to dig deep. Da- Nick's been digging deep in the sack, and he's come up with these questions from our loyal listeners. Get our Submit your questions. Where do they send the questions, Nick? Man, send them to tappedoutpod at gmail.com. Those that we look, like I said, like we got so many last week uh, after last week's episode that I was like, dude, I'm not going to wait again. I'm going to make sure that I dive right into it. Um, but look, what do we always tell them, Myron? Where do they find us at? Where's the best place to be at? It's not oh, just on the podcast platforms, man. YouTube, it is YouTube.com, Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. Become a member at both. So on YouTube, of course, the old saying is what? Like the page, subscribe, turn your notifications on, all that stuff on. But man, but go ahead and become a member. You'll get the show early. Um, Patreon.com, same. All the bonus content we put on there. We're doing some reactions to stuff mm-hmm. when we're leaving shows. We're trying to get that stuff out mm-hmm. there as well. Um, all kinds of stuff, man. And uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, interviews when they start back up, you know, mm-hmm. if you can get people with a pulse. Um, we'll get, you know, we can get some interviews in there. Uh, we're going to release them there first, all that good stuff. Uh, your interview with Hanson. Yes. Uh, Sam Went over very well. Yes. Um, that guy. We dropped it. Like I said, we released it to the behind the paywall for a few days, and then it released out to the public a few days later. So that's why you want to become a member or become a Patreon over there at those places because you get the stuff early and often, man, uh, we, and that's always cool. So Thank you, course, Rob, so. Brother Rob, for the kind words on that. I think it was kind words on that. But, Nick, Nick, I hope you have your conspiracy theory glasses on because we've got the conspiracy theory question first. All right. Philip from Wilmington, North Carolina has asked, with everyone assuming The Rock will turn on Roman and help Cody, do you think it's important that The Rock doesn't actually attack Roman to help Cody and possibly tarnish the win? Now, this is this is a this is a stretch. It's a lot of what ifs. Yes. What do you think? What's Rock gonna um, do? Well, first of all, let me answer that. It's a lot of what ifs. It's a lot of what ifs. But the, isn't that what we do? Isn't that what fantasy booking is? It's a lot of what ifs. Um, but look, I, I think I get what he's saying, and I'm if I'm not, you know, I apologize, Philip. But this is what I interpreted from that question: is he's asking? Look, we all general consensus is, hey, it's all a setup. He's a double agent. He's going to turn. He's going to help Cody win. But I think the question very specifically is like, Rock can't hit. Roman with the belt, like knock him out and Cody get the win, right? Because doesn't that take a little shine off of Cody's win? Mm-hmm. Like, I, to me, I think anything more than The Rock holding off the rest of the bloodline, you know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. that's kind of what he has to do. Like, I, don't, mm-hmm. I just think, or maybe stop Roman from hitting Cody with something. Mm-hmm. Something like that's one thing. I just can't see, like, if Rock, hits him with something or hits the rock bottom and then Cody pins him. Yeah. I, do, I mean, do you agree? I think it does take a little night bit of a shot. Night one off. or night two bloodline rules. That's I don't your think, question. It, I, it, look, I think night one is just a means to get to night two of what they're, are they going to do bloodline rules? Anything goes. Cause let's be honest, dude, don't you kind of have to end it that way because it stacks the odds against Cody even more high drama. From the high chief. And you had you had to explain to me the structure of the Polynesian command order earlier prior to the show. And high chief, final boss, all that stuff. A lot of drama. A lot of drama, a lot of business. So we'll have to see how all that works out, man. Yeah. That's going to be wild. That's going to be wild. But uh, I think this, this Port St. Lucie, Florida, this fellow Justin... Port St. Lucie, aren't you aren't you originally from around there, boss? Literally the town next to it. Town next so, to where you're from. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think I know who this is, but that's a, that's a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wants to know, with Vince gone, 
do you think you'll see more relationships, working relationships, like the one with Bloodsport? Now, we theorized why there is a working relationship with the good people at Bloodsport GCW, uh, Josh Bloodsport, and that was the big lawsuit. Am I correct? That was a Conrad thing. I, it was something he brought out on his show that I thought was kind of, it was pretty cool to think about. I mean, because, like, look, by the way, some people are like, wait, I'm assuming. We just naturally assume, and we can't do that, that we're assuming, you know, Shayna Baszler's getting to work the Josh Barnett blood sport at WrestleMania weekend. Um, by the way, who's she wrestling, Myron? Masa Slamovich. Mash, yeah, tongue. Masha Slamovich from TNA. Yeah. So we're getting a, not only getting her versus, versus someone who's tough, we're not getting her versus an independent. We're getting her versus another promotion, another yeah. televised promotion. We are getting a big deal on this show. Yeah, I've got, there's three zags out of this question for me that, that are going to be inter interesting. One, like, so the question was, yes. So Conrad brought up the an idea of, is this a reaction to the MLW lawsuit? Who we're actually going to talk a little MLW later in the show for a change, right? Mm -hmm. But I think the lawsuit, it's kind of hard to have another monopoly or, you know, lawsuit or anything. Mm -hmm. If you're working with everybody, yep. it, it's a, it's, you know, that, cause that's, yeah, that's their defense of everything going forward. Like, Hey, we're working. Think about it. We're working with this lowly little old independent promotion over here, yep. GCW, or, you know, and we're working with blood sport or we're working with T like, Hey, we, we had TNA on our Royal rumble pay-per-view yep. and we had, you know, blah, 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 yep. blah, blah. And it doesn't hurt anybody. Hasn't hurt anybody at all. Jordan no. looked great on that pay-per-view. This, this, this bit with Masa Slamovich and Shayna Baszler. Now that's a very violent, thing that blood sport thing's a very violent show they're gonna have to it's like a, was it tap out or, or they, there's or, there's no ropes it's basically it's all like fight club or like night like mma type the, stuff the kumite is what somebody said if you know what that is you know the blood sport you know yeah um so yeah i think but look i and that's that's shana came up through that those circles like that was who trained her in the beginning so there's a little background that's probably a payback for you know for like in, in a good way by the way a good payback so is, that, is the kumati is that something that's going to be pay-per-view is that something we can is that something we can watch now now I'm, am i interested I, I, in I watching think, this now? i think they're on triller i think they're on triller which is the old it was fight now it's triller um but you know you uh, i think you gotta make the shit names i don't understand that's, that's kind of why i was amazing. like when i said triller i was like hey it's it used to be fight triller. you know triller. but um the other thing I want to ask you, this is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. AEW was the company that worked with everybody. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, they can't work with this. Or, die. you know, there's like little, like, oh, or, so the relationships are kind of rocky. Um, the TNA one didn't go well for them. I don't think. I could be wrong. But it didn't benefit. So, and then it's like now they're taking New Japan talent. And they sent, they sent the Jungle Boy back over there because – I mean, you get they're still mad at him over the CM Punk thing. I can't, I can't. He still works there though. So I mean, look, he's suspended. He's probably still drawing a paycheck, dude. I mean, or whatever. So, and and now he's just Jack Perry. He's not Jungle Boy anymore. So now he's the he's the cool Perry kid. Um, so what I was trying to get at is, if so, we're going and it's a new regime. Triple H is going in a different direction. He's going to be working with more people. If he starts working with Bloodsport or GCW, and look, it does because, look, there's 20 million reasons why they should play nice with MLW. Um, you know, they start where all these other people they start working with a little bit. What what happens if AEW ben, ends up being the odd person out? They're not special anymore. Nikon empowers Triple H to do all the cool stuff that wrestling no, no, no. wrestling fans have wanted. Okay. You're talking about the cool factor. I'm talking about when I say they're the odd man out, what happens if everybody's playing in the sandbox together, but they're literally the one now left out? Like they're not it was, cool anymore. They're not uh, cool anymore. They're not special. They were for the, the whole purpose of AEW was to be special and let your special wrestlers, your young bucks and all these guys you wanted to see, your New Japan stuff you wanted to see. Well, all of a sudden, WWE's working with all this stuff. WWE's bringing these guys in. You're going to see more cooperation. 
So it looks like to me, you're going to get a bigger piece of the pie for the independents, the super independents, the TNAs, the guys like that, the MLWs, the, the NWA. It makes sense to me. NWA is next. Corgan really wants to make this work. Corgan's a star. They've worked with stars in the past. Is he? Is he? Yes. My daughter thinks he's the greatest thing on the face of this earth. I like some of his music. Mm-hmm. What's to say you won't see him pop up on a, some of his stuff? You won't see uh, a WWE star on his pay-per-view. What do, you, what do you see? You won't get some creative stuff popping up on, on some of these pay-per-views. Could be. Yeah, could be. I, I think could. it's going to help everyone. But AEW is just not going to be special anymore because they've got – this is the thing I am most excited about. Technically, WrestleMania is great. But this is the cultural thing I'm most excited about with WWE right now. They're, I mean, look, they're they're right now they're just on a hot streak, and I think, uh-huh. and from a business standpoint, that everybody in wrestling should be happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But oh boy, a Joe from Hoover, Alabama. Now Hoover, Alabama, we used to have to drive up there when I grew up to go to the Zayers. How how, how crazy is that? Um, but that's where I grew up. Do you guys think that The Rock is getting away with all of his language while all the other talents are being told not to? Why? Because he's The Rock, Nick. He's The Rock. He's he's on the board. He owns a football league, for Christ's sakes. Well, he's a minor. He's he's a minority owner of a football league. He doesn't own the whole thing because they they merged. But. So he's a minority owner now, but he's on the board. Yes, he's the black uh, scorpion, or the scorpion king. Scorpion king. Black or, scorpion was Ric Flair, but, but that's a different story. Oh yeah, he's also uh, that. He's also Black Adam. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, he's a movie star. He's on the board. One of the greatest wrestling talents of all time. The greatest singer I've ever seen. That song on SmackDown killed me. That promo killed me. I I watch these things. The Rock being on television. I, I, WB has become must-see television now. And The Rock is no small part of that. So his profanity, though, on WB TV is scripted. Him and Gewertz write this stuff out. And then they give it to the networks so they know when to bleep it ahead of time. That's not the problem. It's his social media profanity. That's the I problem. think it's both. I think it's both. Even though it's, you know, like it's approved and they're there's they know they've they got the script ahead of time, blah, blah, blah. I'll insert all of that. Getting it through mania, okay. He's the rock, he's special. If it's going on six to nine months from now. People aren't going to necessarily agree with that because it's going to be like, hey, he's getting over at the expense of us being able to cuss and use all this language, which we can't use. And it's not. Here's the thing. It's not even that he that's I I don't even know that he needs to. I think it's all like, again, I think going back to the first question. The over the top antics are probably a tool. I hope they're using to try to convince Roman He's really doesn't like Cody and post mania. I hope it all pulls back and goes, you know, look, you can be edgy, but don't like he's pushing it, you know, but, um, I'm not saying, look, it's not crossing a line with me personally. That's what's funny. When I, when I have these conversations, people think we're talking about us personally. I'm like, look, you could, there's not a word you could say, or there's probably not much you could do in the wrestling world that would, you know, make me go like, "I, I just can't watch this. Well, me neither, but when I'm in an independent show and I see people cursing, not that it bothers me, but I see there's kids in the crowd and I see times where people get up and leave. I've seen people get up and leave when uh, Gary's at Southern Honor saying curse words. I've you seen people what? get up and leave. That's that's their choice, but like my whole thing is it's a PG show. It's a PG-13 show, to be honest with you. Yeah. As long as they're telling them that up front, and like I said, I mean, like, for the most part at this point, I, I just assume, and maybe I'm maybe I'm the negligent one here. What I just assume at this point 
when people you know that like hey we you know we don't we don't do that we don't do that mm-hmm. um it, it could happen though but but what happens what happens when that happens it hurts your money that's why i don't like it at indie shows i don't like to see people's money hurt if but i was promoting th- that show that's what would hurt me yeah but here's the thing if if one if it's it's just a different crowd though if you lost one family because they were like oh that's a bad word but you pick up four or five you know younger people like cuz here's by the way you want me to give you some basic math mom and dad go to southern honor with two kids that are under the age of 10 the two kids are free so you paid for the two parents if four teenagers come in and they have to pay cuz they think it's cool and edgy now you're actually better off. I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing. So the the numbers when it comes to money, I can make the numbers say whatever I want them to say. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I think just the, the twist of it is more just from the aspect of I'm aware that it can happen. But anyway, back to the original question. You, you, Sorry, got, we, you got a point. You got a point. Um, back to Joe's question. I think ultimately in the long run, yeah. It, it, it's a problem if they let this thing with Rock go. By the way, he's supposed to do a movie after Mania. He's going to be gone till SummerSlam probably anyway. So none of that probably matters anyway. So we're not going to see this after this. You think after WrestleMania it's not going to happen anymore? Uh, I'm not saying it won't ever happen when he comes back because I think then we're going to see Bloodline. I think we're going to see Roman versus Rock at SummerSlam potentially. Um, and I think you but I just don't think they heal Rock in the sense of it's the meth and the crack and the, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, you know, drop, especially dropping F-bombs, I think. Because here's the thing. If that movie that he's go off to film, he's probably going to have another one coming out at some point. Yeah. He's going to be back to sweet, lovable rock trying to sell a movie yeah. versus, you know, F, F-bomb F dropping rock. But that's, you know, so you don't, take. You think, you think the long-term effects are scary? If he does it long term, I think it's a problem. Short term, I don't think it's an issue. I think you get through mania because you're only a couple more weeks away. And, you know, and I think we'll be fine. That's just me. Okay. What, you know. gotcha. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, while we're talking about scary stuff, Myron. Yes. Let's talk about our friend, William, as he's knocking it. Look, that YouTube channel is just, if you're, if you're into the paranormal, yeah, the, the go, oh yeah, absolutely. You do want to check it out over at YouTube, William Scary Things. Are you a fan of the strange, mysterious, and unusual? Do you enjoy stories told firsthand about creepy experiences? UFO encounters, ghostly apparitions, near-death and afterlife experiences, even parallel universes? Well, if so, you need to check out the YouTube channel, William Scary Things. It is a new, albeit determined channel. William was influenced as a kid by books, movies, stories, all that were passed down by his friends and family, and they all had a creepy theme. What started out as a scary story narration is now a long-form interview process with people who have experienced weird and unusual things firsthand. Do you want to hear about a house with the former owners that were laid to rest right in the front yard? Yeah, told by yours truly. Well, if so, William Scary's Things has you covered. How about a witness to the Phoenix Lights, probably the most renowned UFO sighting in modern history. Maybe you want to hear about a first-hand encounter with a ghostly apparition late one night with Eda Photo to boot. No problem. William's got you covered there, too. Were you a fan of the scary stories to tell in dark book series as a kid? Want to learn more about the Solway Firth Spaceman? Well, if so, it's all right there. So head on over to William Scary Things and check out his latest episodes and give him a like, subscribe to the channel, heck, leave a comment. Trust me, there's nothing to be scared of. That's right, man. Woo. Check out our friend William over at William Scary Things on YouTube. UFOs, ghosts, all that crazy stuff, man. Absolutely, uh, you know. But listen, uh, yeah. while we're talking about supporting stuff on the show, man, make sure you're sh- you know supporting the sponsors here on the show. Oh yeah, J yeah, J Martin and Company pressure washing, window cleaning. They'll do your driveway, your your house, everything, <laughs> business, residential, everything. They all a yeah. one stop shop. J Martin and Company dot com. Check them out, J Martin and Company on Facebook as well. Either yeah. one. It's that time of year. Spring's coming. It's time to clean that get house. That get pollen that pollen off your house. Yeah. 
Get that yep. pollen out of your driveway. Get that pollen out of your nose. That's the best correct, way to get man. that stuff out of the way. Just clean everything. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And you know what, Nick? I, my daughter watched the show the other day. She saw that William Scary link, clicked on it. She's listened to every episode since then. Absolutely loves it. Loves William Scary. Loves the podcast. Absolutely yeah. can't get enough of it. Chat, check him out. William Scary Things over there on YouTube. Like, subscribe, then turn your notifications on. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, man. What do we got up next, man? Ooh, now this is this is a tough one, Nick. This is a tough one. This comes all the way from Allen from Akron, Ohio. And this is this is uh this is one of those ones we have been batting back for weeks trying to figure a number on this one. Allen from Akron, Ohio asks, What are your thoughts on Mercedes Monet being rumored to be the highest paid female performer in professional wrestling? Good for her. I mean, that's my easy answer. I mean, good for her. Listen, uh, everybody who knows me knows me. I'm a big sports fan, too. And it's um, like, here's the, I was going to say it's professional sports, so it matters. But in college sports, those guys are getting paid just as much. So uh, <laughs> may, may not necessarily be the argument. But, like, I've never been a guy. Like, I, it always fascinates me. And uh, this is, by the way, this picture athlete or her in the same uh -huh. this same thing applies to both it's a talent thing um what i what i'm saying is i've never been a guy who looks at like hey they're paying insert athlete 50 million dollars a year i've never been the guy that's like oh he doesn't book and deserve that you know i'm like what do i care it's like he's not taking money out of my pocket to pay him well mm -hmm. kind of if i go to buy a ticket to th i guess maybe but but you get what i'm saying like it's not my money uh, in the sense of the word, he's not make. I'm not making less because they're making more. Um, yeah. And you don't work for AEW. No, I, I, I mean my argument is it wouldn't matter if I did. Because here's the, it, look, it's the if same. If she draws more for him, you'd make more in the long run. Potentially, that's the truth. Um, but here's the thing, and I, I talk about this in uh, like free agencies going on in NFL right now, mm. and you know guys get hung up on, hey, well this guy just became the highest wide receiver, or the highest quarterback, or the highest even. Look, the markets, first of all, don't go down a rabbit hole. I'm just going to say the words. With inflation, <laughs> more people are going to make, you know what I mean? Like, it's it pay, well, you, you got to pay more. more. Yeah. Correct. So, like, hey, I can't believe this guy is going to make this, and this guy last year made 10% less. Okay, well, if you believe in inflation rates, well, that's probably not what the What the market word. will bear. It is what the market will bear. Um, and it just in, in sports in general, there's always like the next guy or lady who's going to break that threshold and it's going to just keep pushing, keep pushing, and keep pushing. Um, and expect, look, maybe, by the way, something nobody had ever even thought of probably. Tony Khan may already know what the numbers are on the new TV rights. He might have more money. So, like, when the salary cap goes up in football, the next wave of quarterbacks makes more because it's it's the same per, even if it's the same percentage of a bigger number it's a bigger number yeah so if tony khan already knows hey my tv deal is going to be big it's going to be bigger and he's not worried about keeping some for profits um he might just be like hey it's we're going to start raising the, the bar but let me ask you something myron and by the way i want our listeners tap that plot at gmail.com answer the same question it there was a couple years ago it was a debatable that she should have been anyway. One of the highest pre everything that happened at WWE. It was a pretty substantial number of people that thought she was the best women's wrestler on the planet. I'm not saying that was a fact. I'm just asking that there were a lot of people that felt that way. Look, I thought it was Charlotte, but I mean, but you, it's, it'll always be Charlotte in my book. It'll always, my, it'll always, she was good, yeah, but it wasn't. Monet is always good. Yeah, but was it blasphemy great. if somebody told you that it was Sasha? No, no, it wasn't blasphemy. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call you an idiot or anything like that. I would disagree with you, but I wouldn't just blast you. You know, it, it wouldn't be like you. It wouldn't be like you were an idiot, like a totally wrong. You right. had a you had a valid point for a discussion. You know, Correct. some people don't even have valid points for discussion when they come by with their favorites. They're just so biased, Sasha. You know, that she was in there. Uh, Sasha was a terrific wrestler. And if she can get paid that, she can get paid that. But every time Tony Khan tells me there's a, a new super thing, I got a great announcement. You got to look at this. It's going to be good. It just 
pisses out. So if he can pay her and still be making it and it works out, more power to him. Collect that money. Y'all get that money. Him get that money. TV deals, get that money. Do what you can. Yeah, I think it's, you know, they're artists. Wrestlers are artists, and we've, we've come to learn this, that there's a lot of them that it's an art more than even the yes. business side. They are um, artistic athletes. A lot um, of them, like you said, want creativity. Correct. So her going over there, look, the number that you keep hearing, like, look, Okada's like four and a half million. Good for him. You know what I mean? I'm like, kudos. Um, people crap all over Brock because there was a year he made like 12 million. And I'm like, kudos on him. Get your money, man. Do what you, do do your thing, man. I just think if it's not your money, what do you care? Yes. Like I, I've never lost sleep over somebody making a, a big chunk of money unless it was somebody who was doing the same job at a place well, that I was let's doing just, there. I mean. Yeah, and if it's yeah, yeah, if it's a coworker, yes. Well, let's just go ahead and and, and just segue right into Sean from Alpharetta's question. That's Alpharetta, Georgia. That's a neighbor of ours just down the road. Sean wants to know, is there anyone you're excited to see Mercedes Monet face? Now, how will she justify her salary, Nick? Who will she fight that would make her salary worthwhile? If we're going to go with her salary, what are the matchups that will draw? You could call this the, <coughs> the CM Punk, the Chris Jericho, insert another wrestler uh, Cody was this guy by the way in AEW as well they made a good payday they came over and you've essentially got two options you can try to make a, the younger talent get over help them get over Sting did with Darby right yes that was that's an avenue yes or um, this is my take for Mercedes Monet I mean we've heard stuff like hey Willow because of the whole she got injured wrestling yeah. her and she lost the title. Uh, we've heard Julia Hart. Um, like, look, we've heard Sky Blue, et cetera. Yes. Those you want young talent that could use a boost. Yeah. Uh, I think Willow's right on the edge. Julia Hart and Sky Blue, right on the edge of massive, massive pushes. You ready for Nick? Nick Nick's new rule. He's got, he's got to have one hot take on the show now, right? Yes. Here's my hot take. I think that's a horrible avenue to take with her. Oh, you're going to, whoa, what are you going to do with her? Yeah. My hot take is Mercedes Monet. By the way, I agree with the same concept with uh, Will Ospreay as well. But Mercedes Monet needs to be treated like a megastar and put in the ring with other megastars because if she's up here, I think, can I, how can I say this respectfully? The numbers weren't necessarily what they thought they were going to be for her being on Dynamite. Let's go with that. You need to make her look like a star. Yeah. You know who she needs to be in the ring with? I wrote some names down. Soraya. You know why? Because she's still Paige. As far as I'm concerned, she's still WWE's Paige. Britt Baker, uh, Tony Storm's your champion, Thunder Rosa. Yeah. Like, she needs to be in the ring with big, the biggest name in the company, to ele to like tell everybody not only like oh everybody knows she's a star yeah but you need to treat her and keep her like one even if that means she's not wrestling that much will osprey well, ditto see the thing is in my opinion they totally botched her de debut i don't know it, yeah, that's it was wrong. one of those things where if you knew who she was you were great they didn't introduce her for shit. They didn't let you know who she was. They didn't let you know. You, if you didn't know she was coming, if you weren't on the internet as a wrestling fan looking to see she was coming, you didn't know. You didn't know who she was. You didn't know who Mercedes Monet was. You would have to have recognized her as Sasha Banks. They didn't introduce her. It, I think if anybody's a wrestling fan, they know who she, like, I think they know when they saw her, they were like, oh, Sasha Banks is in AEW. CEO. CEO. Okay. What the hell is a CEO? What does that got to do with wrestling? She's the CEO. So some people are EVPs. Some people are CEOs. Is that, an, is that a position? Is she, is, she, is she the chief executive officer? Is she not an executive mm -hmm. vice president? Uh, and then, then 
main event happens and the main event has what what was the the ratings were jack shit for the main event nobody even hung around to see if she was going to come out look that's i think that's the the booking aspect of it yeah like they should have teased that she was coming back and they could have kept their crowd but as far as like what i'm talking about in the ring who she needs to be in the ring with she needs well, to be I've in the ring on, and treat I've got special. On the debut. I'm sorry. And I know I'm turning into Cornette. I know sometimes I am super biased. And I'm really trying, folks. But I think they botched the debut. I think they could have done this better. I think sometimes they play to their audience. And I might have to skip. Well, hell, the next question is, is perfect for this. I'm leading myself into these questions, Nick. Alan from Jackson, Tennessee. Does AEW's manifestation of Dave Meltzer's take on wrestling and its failure to grow prove that Dave's idea of wrestling appeals to a very small audience? Does it, Nick? Yeah. Is Dave disconnected? No. See, there's the myth. This is where I think we disagree on Dave a little bit. Because your question is, is Dave disconnected from wrestling? No. Dave is very well connected to what he likes as wrestling. He's as passionate. I always like he's as passionate about what he likes as you are about what you like, mm-hmm. but but the friction's there because you don't agree on that. The, the, that's not the same thing. The thing is, the question what he's specifically asking. Yes, I think it, there is a very small, diehard internet wrestling community base that they cater to very well. By the way, they do a phenomenal job at catering to that crowd. Yeah. The problem is, is it's not growing. So if it's not growing, is it good for business? So the two arguments are, are being made. Are you trying to super serve this one million? Because they usually hit around a million. That's, that's their... Let's say a million the, people. That's you their ceiling. A million people. That's their ceiling. That's not their app, but that's their... So there's a million people that'll flip over there Some and people watch... Were what, that day. Listen, could, listen a million people watched that, supposedly, that quarter hour that she was on. A million people tuned in to watch her. By the end of the show, you were in the six hundred thousands. Okay, well, that's a bad sign. Because they had school the next day. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know if it's that. I don't even know what it was that. Let them stay up that late. That could be true. Um, so, but the thing is, I think that base Dave is totally in tune with the one point nine nine million that watched Cody Rhodes's interview on Raw Monday, like. Because then on SmackDown, they're doing two threes and two fives. So you're starting to ask, like, where's the – you see what I'm saying? Like, it's, but they it's grown. double the ceiling. They, they've dropped off. Right. They've they've pittered out. And I think that is because they they just super serve this audience that knows knows what they're doing. They know what to expect. They don't go out there and tell you who these people are. If you watch a WE product, they give you a lead-in – in a trailer, and this is why these people are mad at each other. And I, I've said this a hundred times. When we were younger and we would rent pornography, it came on a VHS tape, okay? The people were fully dressed. You got a story about why these people were doing, where they worked, they were delivering pizza, why they were going to do this, what they were doing. The music played. They took off their robes like Ric Flair, and then they did their business. They had their match. And nowadays... People just come into the ring, you hit click, you click on your, your porn hub thing, everybody's already naked and doing finishers. It, it it's the same thing. You never get a build up to know on these shows. You never get a build up to know who Sasha or Mercedes Monet is. You never get a build up for a match. They make matches on these shows. Now you tell me there's a storyline on AEW. We argued about this last yesterday. You tell me there's a storyline. I have to follow deeply on the shows. Like I can't like drift off or do something else when I'm watching AEW. I can't fast forward just a second. I would have to watch AEW deeply every week, just intently to see every single moment. As much as you're on the internet, I don't know how you don't follow. They like the stories that are, I'm like, that's the whole, that's where the most of the juice is, right? You just got to dive in that rabbit hole. You got to get in there. I think what I think where we're disagreeing on a little bit, though, is like I said, the question, Melter, you're like, when you say he's disconnected, I'm like, he's not. He's very connected to that base. It's just a smaller base and it's not helping them grow. 
so the, the 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 detriment to saying that they they're super serving that audience is they're not growing that part i'm agreement with i think this it's like there's separate answers like you're trying to lump all the answers into one it each piece is a thing dave Meltzer is connected to that audience but is that hindering them from growing by super serving that audience? Yes, I think that that, that is. Um, and you know, you're just you like a more casual product in general. Yeah. I want to see. So, some stuff. Yeah. I want to see. I want to see some. I want it to feel. I want people to come out to the desk and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna get this guy. I'm gonna be there in Botwell Auditorium, and this guy pissed me off, and I'm gonna run him out of Birmingham." And like, look, here, I'll give you an example. They when they did forty minutes of talking, I saw people online complaining about SmackDown, saying if I paid tickets to go to SmackDown and I had to sit there for forty minutes for, of promo talking before I had a match, I'd be pissed. Myron would have been happy. It would you were I entertained. Don't go, I don't go for just matches. Right. If I wanted to see wrestling matches, I'd go to I would go to like college wrestling matches or freestyle wrestling, or I I'd go watch football. I love college football. I don't watch pro football like you do. Okay? Because it's not as entertaining because there's not those those deep down hated rivalries I grew up with in the yeah, South. Yeah, that shit's over anyway, so they're taking that out anyway, so that doesn't matter anymore. I know. They're paying for everything now. Well, I just meant they're changing leagues and teams are moving conferences and they're going to sp- add teams and split rivalries. and all. So I always that's what I told everybody. So that's why I saw it coming a couple of years ago and just kind of gradually just moved so on out. I'm, I'm going to be stuck with my damn wrestling. So don't fuck with my wrestling. I mean, okay? You know, so. Don't tell me about just Meltzer. Don't mess with my wrestling. Yeah. You know so. where I go for good wrestling, though? You know where I never have a problem with wrestling? Where's that? Where's that, Nick? Southern Honor. Attention wrestling fans. Join us Friday, March 29th for SHW 61. Live from the Action Building in Canton, Georgia. Just who are the rightful owners of the SHW Tag Team title belts? Find out once and for all when the grapplers face exotic youth to officially crown the true champions. After winning the Pick Your Poison Challenge, Hollywood Hunter James has chosen the stipulation in his Jake the Snake Legacy Championship match against Chip Day. If Chip gets disqualified or uses the Brain Buster, he loses the title. It's been months of anticipation, and now the people's captain, Gunnar Miller, will finally go one-on-one with the in-game CT Keys. And in our main event, Joe Black gets his shot at redemption as he challenges the Southern Honor Champion Judas to a dog collar match with the title on the line. Also in action, Kyle Matthews, Alexander Lev, The Warden, Sal Renaro, AEW star QT Marshall, and more. Tickets start at just $15 and go on sale at the door the night of the show beginning at 5 p.m. Doors open at 7, bell time at 8. As always, kids 10 and under are free. Invite all your friends for another incredible night of non-stop action. Come see why we are SHW and this is our wrestling. That's right, man. We'll be heading up there next week, not yeah. this weekend. We've got some other stuff we're going to let you know in the, in a little bit where we're going to oh, be yeah. at what we did this weekend. Definitely. Yep, we'll get into all that in shortly. But we had another question and a breaking news. As you asked me this question, Uh-oh. I'm going to. I literally got a message through my phone while we're recording. Oh, Nick Scott. Nick Scott. He is. It got ties contacts. in kind of, sort of into this. He's got contacts that have contacts. His contacts are wired into some of the news. Uh, I can't even keep up with it all, okay? His dear friend, Harry, from St. Louis, Missouri, sent us a question. Have you guys heard and have you discussed MLW in the past and wondered what your thoughts were about the settlement, the big settlement they got in the anti-trust, anti-competition lawsuit with Court Bauer and WWE? Yeah, um, so... We're going to come back to that answer. Nah, let's go ahead and do this. So, no, I want to go ahead and tell you. It's not a good time for TKO for settlements. Uh, so they settled two, 20, 20 million to go to MLW. And I literally got a text while we're recording. They've settled a, uh, the UFC part of TKO. Has just settled two class action antitrust lawsuits by fighters seeking better pay. They settled out of court for three hundred and thirty-five million dollars. So, three hundred and thirty-five million dollars settlement. Okay, so, so twenty million dollars to MLW and three hundred and thirty-five million dollars to on fight. the UFC end. Yeah, on the UFC side. So, 
that'll damage you a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm eager to go check the stock here in a minute. But let's get back to the question. Well, glad, good thing I didn't. I don't know. Yeah. Um. So here's the, the we we discussed this briefly, uh, Harry, but a little bit before when it first went down. Um. The question mainly, I guess, is: Is Court Bauer going to inject eat some of that twenty million back into the company? Is he going to say like, "Hey, I'm gonna cut bait and I'm gonna," um, and I think, based on some of the things we've seen in the short term, I think he's going to put the money back in the company because uh, some announcement. They're look, they're going to be out on the road more. They're expanding the number of shows they've got. They're going to do a free monthly show. I think it's called Reloaded on BN Sports and YouTube. Uh, they've got a monthly pay-per-view I think they're going to do on Triller, which, again, Myron, used to be Fight. Try to make that simple. It used to be the Fight. Now it's Triller. If you had the Fight app, it updated, and you're at Triller, so you're good to go. Um, I got all these I got all these apps. I got I to, gotta, you know, to watch all this wrestling and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I try to keep up with everything. Uh, eventually, it'll just be one app, the way it's yeah. going right now. Or they'll all change their names. So I hope this is, I hope this is a big deal. I hope this is great for indie wrestling. I hope. I mean, WWE's got the money. They may not have the money out of that after that lawsuit. I mean, Logan Paul pumped all that money into him with the with the ring thing. You know, if if Logan Paul, if you're watching this, mm, this lemon lime prime is delicious. You know, we've got a great demographic: eighteen to forty nine on the men, eighteen to ninety nine on the women. It's a yeah, great thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the thing is this the. I, when I'm asked, like, look, it's a lot of great. They're doing a great story with Mads Kruger. Um, he's back. Contra's coming in. They attack Court Bauer. Uh, I think that'll draw some interest. Um, you know, look, we're big fans of that of that character, Mads Kruger. Yes. Um, you know, also known as we'll leave it. You know, like, you know, cruel in other parts of the world. Um, so I like that's got me back in. Literally, I mean, they like they re-signed him, and I'm back into watching again. Yes, and so um, it's got me all you know at least back into the game with MLW. Um, but look, if he's going to invest the money back into it, look, here's my ultimate take on it. Um, I'm just jacked that they're at least in the game, and hopefully they can be successful because it's good for business in general. Mm-hmm. That's the issue. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it because it's the money stays in the wrestling business for that. And they can't hurt anything. The more promotions that are viable, the better opportunities more guys are going to have, and and ladies are going to have to to be employed. Yes, and, we need. Um, I mean, we need AEW. I bitch about AEW, but we need AEW. We need every one of these companies thriving. Perhaps they need to hire me to help them out. Yeah. You know, I mean, head of creative would be a great job for me. <laughs> They, um, I, I'm already a, pro wrestling tees endorsed. There yeah. was a question asked on, um, Jeff Jarrett's podcast this weekend. And, uh, and it's kind of a one to consider it's, you know, do you think there's room for more than just two like big viable promotions, you know? And, and he's like, he thinks there could be four or five. And the, and the one, the thing that's the game changer was YouTube. Because and before, like you know, like you couldn't really get out if you didn't have a TV deal. It was tough. Yeah. But now it's like you could distribute your own, you know, um, product through YouTube now, and you you could you know you could you can use it. He was brought up, you know, what like Mr. Beast has two hundred and forty something million subscribers. Get mm-hmm. a product that's big enough now, and then you know, obviously a TV is going to yank you up if you get that big. Yeah. But but so yeah, I, I mean, kudos to MLW and. You know, I, I hope I wish them nothing out. but the best. People are figuring out media these days, and media yeah. is changing so rapidly. You need somebody to be on top of it at all times. Yeah. And listen, but, hold on. Speaking of YouTube, youtube.com forward slash tapped out pod, you know, tapped out wrestling pod, at tapped out pod is the handle. Like the page, subscribe to the page, turn your notifications on, all that great stuff. Patreon as well, by the way. You, you know, we always tell you to become a member there. You'll get the show as literally as soon as we're done recording. I dump it on there. But if you're a podcast listener, make sure you're subscribing. I know lots of people out there are big Spotify fans, Apple Podcast, iHeartMedia. Uh-huh. Um, Amazon podcast numbers are climbing and climbing, which kind of blows me away. Um, but I appreciate it. You know, make sure you're subscribing there. Turn, you know, always give us a five star rating review if you can. Pre- we always appreciate that. Uh, but before we get out of here, we'd like to kind of fill you in on 
the where's in the house and what we got going on in the next week or so. Interesting um, stuff, man. Just yeah. some of the most interesting stuff. We went to that Nightmare Factory show last night. It was their their school show, Nick. Yeah. Uh, saw some talent that has not been seen before. Well, that's the whole great thing about, you know, the Nightmare Factory. You go through the 12, 12 weeks, you know, you get the training for 12 weeks. Then they come out and they put you, you know, in a great building. Uh, they film at the Action Building, which is where Southern Honor takes place. Uh, they get a gr- good video package for those guys to go on and mm-hmm. be able to present it to, you know, promotions and try to get him, you know, to get shots on places. Um, it's cool just to see the process. I think that ultimately for me, it was really cool to see the process. So that, that was cool. That was kind of, they cool bring thing. in the full Southern honor announced team. They bring in the commentary team. They bring in Diana Michelle, the, the best announcer there is in wrestling, the most beautiful woman in professional wrestling. Uh, Gerald and uh, Brandon, two Gerard. guys that are just Gerard. Sorry, you know me. It's fizzed up here sometimes. Two people are just as good as it gets. Dylan is on production. You're not going to get that anywhere else. It, you're you're just going to look like more professional than anywhere. Best bell ringer. You, you stole my bell ringing job. Yeah, you took my uh, gerb. Yeah, um, you probably did better than me because I'm awful slow here lately. Um, no, so look, but, but we jumped through that was Tuesday. Look, when they do these showcase things, give, look, give nightmare factory a follow on social media, Facebook specifically. Cause then when they do these shows, they're free. They're free. They just, you go out and catch a free show. And I look, it was a Tuesday and you know, I was concerned it was Tuesday. Hey, it was going to be late. We were out of there in plenty of time. It was awesome. Oh, yeah. So go check out a free show midweek. We hung you'll around, be, be, yeah. did our well, typical bull bullshit talking to people and we're still home by 10 o'clock yeah you know you couldn't um, make that no um the prior to that obviously we you know anarchy we went to that oh man what a show. always good to see. yeah anarchy and look i'm gonna give my takes on anarchy on the indie show the tapped in indie show that will be coming out next week um we got what a I'm ton of recording you, next week but anyway what i'm gonna tell you is lev alexander lev and chip day had a match that had it happened later in the year, probably would have been match of the year. Um, it was very similar to that match Bryce and Chip had last year that was match of the year. Uh, Chip Day is like a measuring stick in Georgia. If you can hang with Chip Day in a match, you've arrived. And Lev hung with Chip Day. Lev had a great match with him. I, it was phenomenal. I was really really impressed by both chip day always impresses me yeah oh, but yeah. lev killed it congratulations yep. both the guys this weekend totally coming impressed. up you're we're going to be splitting up duties oh, yes. so we can cover a bunch of wrestling i'm going to be heading to, to buford nation. to disruptor um, got it you're that gonna... card you got man Woo! tell me about it uh, look, tons of stuff. Like we're gonna have to, again, I'm gonna discuss it all next week. Uh, if you're gonna be in the area, come check us out. We'll be in Buford at uh, Tannery Row. That's where I'll be. You're gonna be up in Royston at the Royston Dome. Yes. Uh, you're gonna go see the uh, the the Mason Andrew show that they're doing up there. Uh-huh. Tons of talents on that card. Should be fun. Um, so check that out. And it's in the Royston Dome in Royston on Saturday. So double duty on Saturday. We're gonna be splitting up to cover both of those shows. Man, wild week. Oh, yeah. Lots of stuff going on, man, and a whole lot more. I'm looking forward to it. WrestleMania is around the corner. A um, couple specials. Uh, we talked a little bit off air about how we're going to yep. go go into Mania. Um, we have it. Let us know what you think. Tappedoutpod at gmail.com. We were, we're thinking, like, Ultimate Mania card or a uh, prediction show. Like, which order? Because, you know, do we wait till the week before? Mania to do the prediction card, and you go ahead and do that. Do the main. So let us know which ones you got, the format you guys like, tappedoutpod at gmail.com. And Myron, you could even throw your opinion in there as well, like what you think. I mean, you know, if there's one. I'll, I'll submit something definitely because, man, those are some crazy shows. And I, uh, Mania is happening so fast, Nick. It's just sneaking up on me. It's yeah. just sneaking up on me. And it's, man, it's my favorite time of the year. Some people get Christmas. We get WrestleMania. That's right, man. Um, well, look, lots of indie shows, lots of wrestling, Raw, SmackDowns, all this stuff going on in the next week or so. Uh, spring break's coming up, a whole lot of craziness. Um, anything else from you before we get out of here, man? No, just a happy wrestling fan. All right, brother. Well, what's the old saying, man? If I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out.